Number 9. Mulberry Harbors On June 6, 1944, 156,000 Allied troops descended on the coast of Normandy, France in a mission to free the country from Nazi control. Famously known as D-Day, it was the largest seaborne invasion in recorded history. To facilitate the rapid offloading of supplies, troops, and vehicles, the Allies placed portable harbors at Omaha Beach and Gold Beach. These portable harbors were known as Mulberry Harbors, and they were developed by the United Kingdom. The structures were towed across the English Channel in sections and assembled at their respective sites. Each harbor consisted of steel roadways that floated on steel and concrete pontoons. They were meant to be used for three months, but the harbor at Gold Beach, known as Mulberry Harbor B, or Port Winston, ended up being used for 10 long months, unloading as much as 18,000 tons of supplies daily. Its remnants are still visible today. Mulberry Harbor A was only partially built when it was severely damaged in a storm. It was abandoned the same month the harbors were put in place. Number 8. A Fish Far From Home Headlines around the world created an uproar in early 2019 when a rare hoodwinker fish washed ashore at the Cold Oil Point Reserve near Santa Barbara, California. To make things even weirder, the incredibly strange-looking specimen was found thousands of miles outside its normal range in the Southern Hemisphere. At first, conservation specialist Jessica Nielsen thought the seven-foot creature was an ocean sunfish, noting in a Facebook post that it was even taller than it was long. When he saw Nielsen's photo, marine biologist Thomas Turner rushed to the beach to get a first-hand look at the fish. He posted photos of it online, and they caught the attention of Australian researchers, who speculated that it was a hoodwinker fish. Marine scientist Marianne Nygaard, who discovered and named the species in 2013, was tagged in the photo. She told the USA Today that she nearly fell off her chair when she first saw the image. Nygaard visually confirmed the species, which was later verified through DNA testing. The hoodwinker is one of five species of sunfish. Known for their large size and unusual shape, sunfish are considered the world's heaviest bony fish. They grow shockingly fast, reaching as much as 800 pounds during their first 15 months of life. While it's not the largest of the sunfish, the hoodwinker is still pretty huge, weighing up to 2.2 tons by adulthood. Although it's rarely spotted, documented sightings of it date back to the 19th century. The beached specimen is one of several that have appeared in and around Monterey Bay, far from where they're usually seen off New Zealand and Australia. Scientists are unsure why some have traveled such a vast distance, but they suspect that the uncharacteristic movements are somehow tied to climate change. Number 7. Abandoned Bunkers During the 19th and 20th centuries when Russia was under Tsarist rule, a series of concrete bunkers were built along what is now the Latvian coast. Known as the Lipaya Northern Forts, they once surrounded the city of Lipaya and functioned as part of its central fortress. The buildings were abandoned in 1908, barely a decade after they were finished being built. Officials decided to desert them after identifying them as a strategic mistake according to Latvia's official tourism website. Attempts to demolish the bunkers with explosives were only partially successful. Today, the beach remains littered with the crumbling ruins of the structures that survived the blast. But the Baltic Sea seems to be taking over with the unfinished demolition work. Some of the forts have collapsed, others are left standing for now, but it's only a matter of time before they too succumb to the forces of nature. Tourists can take guided tours of the La Paya Northern Forts, where they'll participate in a game called Escape from the USSR. It's more or less a mock scenario in which tourists search for a missing friend who was kidnapped by the Soviets. To many, the game sounds too eerily realistic to seem like a fun idea. What do you think? Are you up for a round? Or would you prefer to sit out the imaginary crisis? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 6. Deceptive Dummy A volunteer named Kathleen received the scare of a lifetime earlier this year at Perdido Key in the Florida Panhandle. While helping to clean the beach with an organization called Ocean Hour, she spotted what initially looked like a decapitated corpse covered in seaweed and barnacles. The sight was convincing enough at first glance for a fellow volunteer to dial 911. But Kathleen mustered up the courage to take a closer look and found, much to her relief and to the relief of concerned onlookers, that she hadn't discovered a corpse after all. It was a mannequin, so it makes perfect sense why Kathleen thought she'd encountered a headless human body and why the people around her also panicked. Nobody ever figured out why or how the mannequin ended up on the beach, but it probably spent a lot of time in the water to end up encrusted in sea life, according to a Facebook post by Ocean Hour. Everyone involved in the cleanup was reportedly glad to learn that it wasn't a corpse, and it was removed as part of the organization's beach cleaning efforts. Number 5. Bizarre Dead Dolphin 
In early 2020, visitors at Destiladeras Beach in the Mexican state of Jalisco were shocked to discover an eyeless, finless, dolphin-like creature with sharp teeth and an eel-like tail. Disturbing images of the dead creature went viral on social media, sparking a widespread frenzy to figure out what exactly it was and why it looked the way it did. Based on the animal's lack of eyes, locals speculated that it was a deep-dwelling species that lives in total darkness and has evolved to survive without eyesight. But even experienced fishermen were unable to identify it when asked by the media if they knew what it was. They did point out that there's an area of the ocean nearby in Puerto Vallarta measuring thousands of feet deep. Perhaps that's where the strange creature came from. Although the bizarre being was never formally identified, social media users were quick to share their opinions. One person suggested that the carcass belonged to an eel that became bloated while it decomposed, making it look more like a dolphin. What do you think it was? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 4. Rare Football Fish Earlier this year, a jet black football-shaped fish with dozens of razor-sharp teeth washed ashore on California's Newport Beach. A beachgoer discovered the terrifying 18-inch long creature laying in the sand. Known as the Pacific football fish, the species isn't rare, but it's seldom seen because it lives more than 3,000 feet below the water's surface. It's one of around 200 known anglerfish species and dwells in complete darkness where food is scarce. As an ambush predator, it lures its prey using a bioluminescent fishing rod-like appendage that protrudes from its forehead. Only female anglerfish, who grow up to two feet long, have this appendage. Males only reach up to an inch in length and exist solely to procreate. As sexual parasites, they latch on to a female's body and fuse to her until all that's left of them are their reproductive organs, which enable her to bear offspring. Nobody knows how a Pacific football fish ended up on Newport Beach back in May. California Department of Fish and Wildlife employee Joe Gortez told the Los Angeles Times that it's uncommon, but not entirely unheard of, for deep sea fish to wash ashore. And while many people think it looks like something out of a nightmare or a horror movie, the ability to study the fish up close was a rare treat for scientists. To their surprise, they recently got another chance to do this. In the last month, three deep sea fish have washed ashore in San Diego County. One of them was a 13-inch long Pacific football fish. And even though several of them have been found in recent months, experts still say it's an incredibly rare occurrence. Before this year, the last time a specimen that was in good enough condition for scientific study appeared on a California beach was 20 years ago. Number 3. Extremely Rare Seashell The Junonia snail is a large deep-water sea snail that lives in the Gulf of Mexico at depths between 95 and 413 feet. Because it lives miles from the coast, its seashell typically only appears on shore after a hurricane or a strong storm. So it's rare for beachgoers to come across one of these highly coveted cream-colored shells, which are covered in spiraling rows of squarish brown dots. But it does happen from time to time. While walking along the shore of Sanibel Island off Fort Myers recently, a tourist from Ohio named Carolyn Kaplan spotted the Junonia shell's distinct pattern in the sand. At the time, she was with another shell seeker, whom she warned, you're gonna freak out before plucking the shell off the ground. After vacationing at Sanibel Island for 45 years and having spent 17 years living in Key Largo before returning to Cleveland, Kaplan had all but given up hope of ever finding a Junonia shell. Another Ohio resident named Bonnie Sippy discovered one of the highly sought-after shells on Sanibel Island in September during a vacation away from Cincinnati. Unlike Kaplan, she had no idea that the Junonia shell was so rare when she found it. She simply thought it looked cool. A little while later, a fellow visitor was describing the Junonia shell to Sippy when she realized she had one in her possession. Bonnie told the Sanibel Captiva that without the stranger's help, she would have never realized she found something so unique and hard to come by. Number 2. Narluga Skull Almost 30 years ago in 1990, a hunter spotted three strange-looking whales swimming off the coast of western Greenland. He managed to get his hands on one of the creature's skulls, and it was unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Researcher Mess Pita Heide Jorgensen suspected that the specimen was a hybrid between a narwhal and a beluga. Others speculated that it was a beluga with a defect or disorder of some type. At the time, DNA technology simply wasn't advanced enough to say for sure. For the next several decades, the skull sat at storage at the Natural History Museum of Denmark. In 2015, curator Aline Lorentzen decided to take a second look at it. DNA technology had come a long way since the early 90s, and scientists managed to extract a usable sample. It turned out that the creature was indeed a hybrid. Born to a narwhal mother and a beluga father, it possessed a bizarre combination of traits from both. 
The weird whale had beluga-like teeth, as well as a twisted leftward spiraling bottom row of narwhal-like chompers. It lacked the narwhal's characteristic horn, though. Scientists had written in a 1993 study that the animal's teeth were unlike any known species, but that they seemed fitting for both narwhals and belugas. The DNA findings simply confirmed that the team was on the right track with their suspicions after all. Whale researcher Travis Park, who was not involved in any of the studies, described the skull as almost exactly what you'd imagine you'd get if you mixed a beluga and a narwhal together. He added that genetics don't usually work out so cleanly. The skull is the first solid evidence that narlugas are actually a real thing. Until the discovery, experts believed that it was nearly impossible for belugas and narwhals to mate, despite being members of the same family. The two species diverged from a common ancestor around five and a half million years ago, and their shared gene flow ended roughly 1.25 million years ago, making it surprising that they managed to interbreed after so long. An isotope analysis of the animal's teeth shows that it dove deeper than either of its parents in search of food, but besides that, researchers know almost nothing else about it, and nobody has seen one since. Number 1. Dead Seal Colony Late last year, scientists announced the disturbing discovery of 7,000 dead Cape fur seals in central Namibia. The carcasses, which came from the Pelican Point colony, began appearing in September of 2020, according to conservationist Nauda Dreyer, who works for the nonprofit Ocean Conservation. A month later, Dreyer spotted an alarming number of dead seal fetuses from the same colony. An estimated 5,000 to 7,000 female seals had miscarried, leaving the coast littered with dead baby and adult seals. Female Cape fur seals typically give birth between mid-November and mid-December. In the words of Dr. Tess Gridley of the Namibian Dolphin Project, some of the carcasses appeared thin-looking, emaciated, with very little fat reserves. Experts are at a loss to explain what caused the massive die-off. They have several theories citing pollution, bacterial infection, and malnutrition as possible factors. This isn't the first time seals have died in mass along the Namibian coast. Back in 1994, around 10,000 adults and 15,000 fetuses died in the region. Scientists suspected that food shortage and bacterial infection were to blame. But much like the uncertainty revolving around the more recent deaths, they don't know for sure. Thanks for watching. What's the strangest thing you've ever found on the beach? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.